can tell you something. For a while, I lived in a place called Delray Beach, Florida. I won't go into a, how I got to Florida. In fact, I had said one time in my life I would <laughs> I say <laughs> never, never, ever go to Florida, but uh, ended up there. So never say never. Anyway, there, there a series of events, I ended up living in a house so that was well, a house owned by two old women. When I say old women, I don't say older women, they were old, you know. Miss Essie and Miss Bessie. And I had a good, well, I had a good time there. I really respected these women. Miss Essie, I, uh, one time I recorded, she playing a piano, man. It was like, whoa! It's like that old, and singing gospel, that old, that spiritual, that old, that before the blues gospel kind of gospel. In fact, in that community, they had a, they had a church, uh, something like the primitive something church. It was, it was right by uh, that famous tennis court where all those tennis people, you know, got there, you know, those, I don't know if it was Chrissy Everett, but don't those kind of people. But that church, they were playing some music one time, sounded like the Rolling Stones. I'm talking about hard rock, and these are, you know, it's a pretty much called black people. Anyway, that's not what I'm really talking about. But while I was there, I was, I mean, I was destroyed at one particular point. Because uh, Miss Bessie, you know, she watched them Christian channels, you know, TV things, them, them TV preachers. And she gave money to these people. You know what I'm saying? She gave money to these TV preachers. These, they, they mostly from the South, you know, whatever it was. Okay, so, you know, I had that time. But something's happened recently, but, but let me tell you something else. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, I took a trip one time, uh, South Africa, uh, a minute in Zimbabwe, and I was in Zambia for most of it was like a New Year's kind of thing. I used to like to travel on New Year's, like to travel on my birthday too. Those two times a year I travel. And uh, I was in Zambia. And, but going back from Zambia, I took this um, commie ride across Zambia and came down to Namibia to catch uh, to go down to Vinhook. Great trip, you know. When I was coming across the border from Zambia to, to Namibia, you have to take like a five minute walk. And I was walking with this brother, you know, and you know, uh, and he was just talking. He was, he was one of them Christians, you know. Uh, anyway, so we got in a taxi. Uh, the combi came on down. At that time, I saw, man, that was a great trip. I, right in the middle of the road was an elephant walked by. And it was like a thing was like, 12 meters high, oh, okay, I might be exaggerating a little bit, but at least 10 meters high, that boy was big, you know, walking across the corner, I asked the company, I said, this happened all the time, because people pay big money, so far as they see something like this, they said, ah, oh, yeah, this is like northern, this is like northern Namibia, he said, oh, yeah, they do that all the time, sometimes we gotta wait, because they, they lay down in the road, you know, whole troop, so anyway, so we get, we get down to Finhook, and because we get down earlier, and I, I have to catch a bus back to Cape Town. So it's like, oh, I'd be like there all day then. So the cat, you know, he invited me over to his place, you know, okay. So, uh, you know, to, to chill, you know, you know, take a sleep, because it was a rough, a rough ride, but I mean, I was doing Tai Chi at the time, so it didn't bother me. But um, I still do Tai Chi, tai Chi now. But anyway, the, 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 we ended up, you know, sleeping in his bed, you know, and stuff. And then at some particular point, because I noticed he's doing the, he's doing the Christian thing, that um, I knew he was going to lay the Christian thing on me, you know. I said, cool. So sure enough, you know, about a, two hours before we, from my buses, you know, before I have to leave, he pull out this track, you know, start talking about stuff and, you know, being born again and, you know, and all that stuff. And I, uh, you know, I listened to him. <laughs> I listened to the brothers, fine. You know, actually, he's a true Christian because he did that Christian thing. You know, he opened his home to me, blah, 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 blah. But here's the thing, man. The tract he was quoting, whatever have you, was one of these Southern Christian guys saying that Miss, Miss Bessie was in, in Farwood. And so I, so I let him do his thing. And then I said, well, then I started talking, engaging him, you know, telling, people, telling him about my, uh, my, my, my deal with religion and spirituality because, you know, religion and spirituality, as you know, religion and spirituality are two different things, you know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> you, know, you, you can co-opt a religion, but a spiritual thing, spirituality, well, that's, that's it. 
But I told him my story. And he looked, and he go like, okay. <laughs> he left it alone. And I bring all this up because recently in, uh, in Uganda, there's been some developments. Now, I like Uganda. I've always wanted to go to Uganda because I think Uganda is where, you know, humankind, you know, crawled out of the lake there, you know. That's my, you know, thing. That's what I said. So, but about 15, whatever years ago, there was a big AIDS epidemic and they, they solved it by, you know, uh, using condoms. But then recently they did, some people got into power and they banned condoms, something like that. Now the AIDS thing went on back up. Then come to find out, some of these cats are going over to, to the states, to these Southern Christians, these same Southern Christian dudes. And they get, I won't say brainwashed, but they get indoctrinated with that doctrine, you know. And the cats come back and now they're into politics. And they're actually banned like gay people. You know, they're not these. I'm going like, really? Because, see, the thing is, that same African that went over there, if he stayed in, in those Southern Christian things for a while, what would happen? He'd find out that, you know, he, the black Trump's gay. <laughs> you know, your gays want to go black or something else. But here's the problem. When they put this law in, that means that, like gay people, you can be killed or, or outed or whatever you say like that in Uganda. And this thing is spreading over to Nigeria too. Uh, uh, not the killing, but you know, it's against same-sex marriage or whatever it is. But the, the problem is that you're killing human beings. You're killing Africans. Now, we talked about Robert Sabuka and said that Africa and humanity is one. So to be human means you be Africa, be African, you got to be human. So these cats are doing inhuman things that's perpetrated by the, look, I got to say it this way. I got to say it this way. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I got to say it this way. By some Southern crackers. That's, I said it. By some white Southern crackers. Them brainwashed these guys. It's like, it's like the colonialists came here and, you know, and undercut and kicked to kill other Africans. So I don't get it. I'm not with it. And this is this is devastating. You're gonna kill people in the name of a religion that don't even like you. Don't even like you. <laughs> look, uh, look, I'm an audio dramatist. I, 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 I'm, I'm maybe I'm exaggerating what's going to happen, but it's what I mean, it is happening. But I, I can stop here. It's, it's, it's too much for me. Um, look. This is one of those dispatches from the arts director emeritus. Uh, well, that would be me, T, from the Pattersons, taking a train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect.